calculates at the same circuit that we have, uh, with which we have done uh, super, uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, current divided loop. Use the same circuit for verification of this. Place an emitter here. And we have another resistor connected with another source. Let's see, okay. Forget about this nice resistor here. Same. Thing. Listen, you cannot see anything. You better get here. There are not too many tools. Get here. Okay, listen. We will use two different sources. So, for example, there will be a 12 volt source and there will be a 5 volt source. So, these two different sources are working, right? For now. And now, now listen, what the superposition theorem says? Superposition theorem says that in any branch, like this is one branch, this is another branch, there are three different branches, right? Yes, sir. So, at any branches, the resultant current. Why we call it resultant current? Because there are two different sources. And for each source, there is a current. In this branch, for 12 volt source, there will be a current. For 5 volt source, there will be a current. Right? And the, the, the currents, the, how many currents are basically flowing here? Two. One. Oh, basically, practically one current is flowing. But as per this source, and both sources are okay, okay one, this source is generating a current. And this source is obviously generating a current. Then, but there will be an effective current which is flowing. Right? And, and that effective current. We will we'll calculate what, what is that basically effective current. Our job is just to find out that effective current. Okay. So, these laws, I mean, this superposition law says that effective current at any branch, effective current that means what? When both sources are working simultaneously, I mean, when both sources are active, in that time the current flowing in, in each branch is called the effective current of each of the branches. Right? Think about in this branch the effective current is I. Okay, so that effective current will be equal to the sum of individual source current that would have produced when individual sources are working. I'm telling you again, the effective currents due to both of the sources are working simultaneously, I, will be equal to the sum of the currents. That is flowing, that means there will be two currents flowing here. The sum of them will be the effective current. Okay, then what are the two currents? The two currents that would have produced when only one source is active. I mean, each source active alone. Maybe when only five volt source is active, we'll, we'll put this source as a short. That means only one source circuit right now. So for that, there will be a current flowing here, right? Okay, consider that is I5, because the, due to five volt. Okay, the I5 volt, five volt source. And again, short this 5 volt. Keep only 12 volt source active. Now there will be a current flowing. That is considered I 12 volt. So now this law says that the effective current, the resultant current, will be equal to sum of the individual source current that we have produced when only one source is active. You understand? Huh? Yes, sir. Okay, now let's see. Just need some words and that person